Muy bien. So today we're working on our series, an S64 that has a hydraulic problem. And the reason we want to do a video on this, because when we do our live events and questions across the internet come in, we get asked a lot of times, we don't have lift or tilt on our bucket. We, we are, are weak hydraulics. So in this case, this one is what, Mike? It's weak or we'd have none? Well, at low idle, we can't even pick the, I got a bucket on, I can't even pick it up at low idle. But so. if you accelerate, we can raise the bucket Correct. up. So that kind of tells us that we've got something wrong in the hydraulic system. But real quick, let's take a look at what Mike's talking about. Yeah, people are always asking us on our lives, how do we test a gear pump? How do we do a direct gear pump test? And we're like, we'll get there eventually. We'll make a video. So. We will. That, and yeah, that's the purpose of this video today is to show yep. how we do those testing procedures. But we'll show what our symptoms are first, and then we'll go to into our so testing. So I'll start it at low idle, and I'm going to try to pick it up, pick up the bucket, and you'll see, how, you'll see what happens, so. So right now it's unlocked. Um, I'm gonna pick up the bucket right now. See, I'm trying to pick up the bucket and nothing is happening. I'm gonna bring up the throttle, and you can see it starts to move, but when I let back off, still, I got nothing. I can go down because of the weight of the bucket. But I can only go up when I bring up the throttle. So that's telling us our we have an issue with our uh, lift circuit. So we'll move on over here to kind of show you what we're looking at. Yeah. So right away we know that we've got a hydraulic flow or pressure problem and without flow you can't have pressure so the first thing we're gonna do is check our gear pump or implement pump so if we look at what we have on the table here you know you've got a whole pump stack on the machine this pump section over here is only for drive this is your left and right drive it has nothing to do with your auxiliaries it has nothing to do with lift or tilt this drive is a, a hydrostatic pump right here pump set it's right so when you two separate pumps we call this hydrostatic. Correct. We call this... Just a gear pump. Just a gear pump. This is variable displacement. This is fixed displacement. Piston pump, gear pump. So the only way that we can have variable displacement is based off RPM, but it's not variable. It's the same displacement per rotation. So we increase the RPM, we can get more flow, but the displacement of the pump itself is fixed. So this is what creates the flow to do the lift, tilt, and auxiliary. So this is where we suspect our problem is, but we gotta test it because inside the system, there could be something wrong inside the control valve. How we manage pressure in the system is from the main relief here located in the bottom of the control valve. Now, although we're looking in our series control valve, this is actually a D2 control valve is what we call it. As far back as I can ever remember, you're gonna have this main relief. That is the only other thing really, I mean, there's a lot of things in the system that could cause this lift issue. Hell, it could be bad cylinders, right? right. Um, but that's why we gotta test pressures first to make sure that, and then we're gonna do a direct pump test to rule out control valve cylinders, uh, main reliefs. This is what the main relief looks like because we're gonna replace that too when we do a gear pump. We always replace the main relief as well. So we're gonna start by checking pressure through the auxiliaries. So right now we're checking pressure from the gear pump through the control valve all the way up to the quick connect for the auxiliaries. So I showed, or I've, I've talked about this many times where we just plug in a gauge directly into the auxiliary port. I like to use the lower port. I mean, you really, you can use any port, but when you pull your trigger, this is the continuous flow port. We call this, um, the bottom one's the female. She's always on the bottom, she always puts out. That's how we know that that's the direct um, continuous flow section of the, that's just how we politically remember it, correct, right? right yeah, it is politically correct. So what we're doing is we're just deadheading the auxiliary flow into our gauge, and that tells us whether or not the system can make pressure. This will rule out if it's a bad cylinder, right? Yep. Because if we had a bad cylinder and it wouldn't lift and we met pressure here, or if we met pressure here and it wouldn't lift, then, then we'd we go to cylinders to or correct. we'd go to, go to something else. So the whole system, auxiliaries, lift and tilt, all have the same pressure relief valve. So let's go ahead and start it up. And we're gonna deadhead right into this gauge and see if we can build pressure. So if you wanna come over here and take a look at the gauge. 
might have to come around on this side so we can kind of see the PSA. Okay, I'm gonna fire it up right now. I'm gonna turn on the auxiliaries. So 600 PSI roughly, now increase your RPM. I'm gonna bring up the throttle. So we're making about 1,800 PSI at full throttle. So 1,800 PSI is not enough. Our, our main system relief should be, let's just say average about 3,500 PSI, and this one's not making it. Now, how do we rule out anything else? Okay, now we know we're not getting full system pressure through the auxiliary valve, but how do we know for sure it's our pump? Well, we're gonna do a direct pump test, which means we're gonna come right off the pump. Mike built us a little device that we can hook on there and we're basically gonna slowly uh, shut that flow off and see if we can build pressure on the we're, pump. What we're side. doing is an efficiency, a pump efficiency test. Almost without the flow, because we're not using a flow correct, meter. Correct, correct. But in this case, we're only concerned about- Pump efficiency test. All right. <laughs> we're only concerned about pressure right now. I'm not really concerned about flow. I mean, technically we should be doing flow, but-, but this, this, will this, us, has, this will tell us everything This has nothing to, to do with, this, this is not a flow issue, this is a pressure issue. Okay, all right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the cab up and we're gonna start installing our um, other kit, then we'll kind of explain how that works and we'll be right back. Ruling everything out of the system. Basically, I know we got a lot of stuff in the machine, but off the gear pump, we're basically, in, in theory, or not in theory, what we're doing is we're just coming directly off the pressure of the flow port of the pump and we're putting a gauge in there with a little valve that we're gonna cl slowly close. We're gonna restrict that flow with our valve and behind that it should build pressure, right? What if we have a water hose hooked up to a faucet, right? And it's just flowing right out of the hose and we try to kink that hose, what happens on the backside? We build pressure on the backside going back toward the faucet, right? This kind of works just like regular water in a hose. So that's what we're doing here. We're kinking the hose and see if we, the pump itself will build pressure. And we do that by this little device that Mike put together for us. So this hose here is coming directly off of our pump into our gauge right here. And this is our flow control where we can actually spin it down and turn it off. And then the rest of the flow is just going right back into the tank. So we just got a hose, doesn't have a fitting in it. We just dumped the fluid right back into the tank. Now, what's the first thing you want to do before you start this machine if you're doing a direct pump test? What do you want to make sure of? You want to make sure that valve is open. All the way open. All the so way open so we don't have a reflow back to that. So the reason we're showing a flow control valve, because I know probably if you remember, if anyone watched the live streams, I know that on my system, I use a ball valve, okay? So I slowly close a ball valve and see if I can build pressure. If you close that ball valve all the way, there's, there's no relief valve in this little test structure, neither in mine. If you close it all the way, something's gonna give. Either a hose is gonna blow, the pump's gonna split apart, pump shaft's gonna break, something is going to give. Fluid does not compress. Exactly, that's why we don't recommend using a ball valve. That's why we're showing this video with the flow control. All right, so what we're gonna do is get our gauge turned on. We gotta get the machine started up and we're gonna watch and see if we can build pressure. Now we don't have to press any buttons or, or, or release anything in the cab. Once the machine starts, the pump is creating flow. Go it's ahead, Mike. It's turning, yep, you ready? Go ahead. Okay, so machine's running. You see that we have a little bit of pressure, but we have zero restriction. We're just flowing right back to tank. So I'm gonna start closing our flow control and start building pressure. Now. If I was on a good system, I would only want to close this to about 3,000 PSI, again, because I don't have a relief built into this. So this still is not 100% proper. But you can see as I close the flow control, I start restricting flow, I start building pressure. We're only at 150 PSI, so I'm gonna go ahead and crank this thing down. Okay, I just shut it off. So this thing is completely blocked off and we're only building basically what we had in our um, auxiliary. Right now we're at 596 PSI. So I'll go ahead and open up that flow control. You see our pressure comes back down, but completely blocked off. We're only building 
about 600 PSI. You can see right here, we have zero flow going into the tank, and we're only got less than 600 PSI on the pump. Okay, Mike, we can shut it down. So that's, so we, we eliminated everything else in the system. That test right there tells us that that pump is not capable of building pressure or no creating good. enough flow. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, no good. No good. No effing way no. So what we're going to do is hopefully that test makes sense. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see in the machine because it's dark and there's a lot of tubes in there, but we just found the main line coming off of the pump and hooked our fitting right to that. So there's not a perfect setup out there. Every time we do test, we kind of got to build our own systems, right? So we have to have extra hydraulic fittings and yep. couplers and stuff like that. And it helps that we can make our own hoses and stuff. So, all right, we know that's bad. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this pump swapped out real quick. Did I say we? I mean, Mike's going to go ahead and get this pump swapped Correct. out real quick. And then we're going to, um, we're probably not even going to do the direct flow test because the new pump we know or we feel confident is going to work. We're just going to test it the auxiliary and see what the pressure difference is in that case. You ready, Mike? Yep. Let's do All it. All right. While Mike and Joel are assembling the other pump, we're taking this old one apart to see if we can kind of identify what the failure was inside. Get an idea of just what, what happened. So I always like to look at the upper valve plate. So right now we're looking at the charge section of the pump. We do have some scarring on here. Not terrible. Look at the gear pump, or the actual gear section in the charge pump. Yeah, I know it's hard to see, but a lot of wear on the gears here for some reason. And then our valve plate, our lower valve plate. That's, well, it's hard to see, but I mean, it's not terrible, but again, that's the charge section right here is going to be our implement section. Deep grooves. You can actually see where it's burned through the brass, the upper coating here. Deep scars and burning in the valve plate here on the gear pump section. So these valve plates are removable, but you can't get this one out and they're replaceable, but it's not really hardly worth rebuilding these pumps at this point. Ooh. And then look at this lower valve plate. Oh wow! Here, holy crap! Just come apart. You can take a look at this gear right here. Oh wow! It's, it's got all burned up. Really, really hot. You can see the other gear right here. Again, super burned up. The edges are all destroyed. You can feel deep grooves. Here's the valve plate that's gone. I mean, look at the actual coating on it. It's like ripped off there, completely burned through. So, kind of tell the difference between the charge section that did not, charge section was okay. We probably still had low charge pressure, but the main implement side, completely gone. So what happened? I mean, I don't know. Um, sometimes gear pumps just go bad. This one actually looks like it got hot, maybe starved for oil, is what see I'm thinking. As well right here. Deep burning, deep grooves. I mean, that is just destroyed. So although we don't have the history on it, Mike, I'm almost going to say this was lack of lubrication. Uh-huh. I think it ran out of oil, blew a hose, and they lost oil, kept trying to run it before they got oil in it. And that's probably what caused this damage. So 
Mike's going to get the new one installed. We're going to get the filters changed. We're going to fire it up, top off the oils, and check pressures. Nice. All right, so Mike just got done putting the pump in, and we already kind of primed the system and tested it. We know we do know that it now raises the pump, so we know we got better pressure than we did. But we had to guess on kind of where to set the pressure relief, so that's the final thing we're going to do. It's going to be dead on. Is it going to be dead on? My laser eyes. Okay, so spec on this is 3,500 plus or minus 50. So we can go 3550 on the high end, but we're going to try to get it close to 3500 as possible. We're going to run it about half throttle. So what we're going to do to set this is we're going to put the gauge back on our auxiliary coupler, just like we checked pressure before. And then Mike's going to start the machine up and he's going to engage the auxiliary hydraulics. And then we're going to raise the cab while the machine's running and make those final adjustments on the pressure relief valve. It's a good thing we put in a new pressure relief valve because what'd you find on that one when you pulled it out, Mike? Let me grab it. It's just a good idea when you do a pump to do a pressure relief valve anyways, but... Here's the old relief valve, and you can see that one of the backup rings was actually cut in half. It was destroyed, so... Um, it wasn't... Th this one would cause it, you know, to leak externally, but... You know, it's a good idea just to replace them. Mm. Just because of that. But cheap insurance nonetheless. Yep. All right, we got our gauge on there. Let's do it. I'll start it up and see where we're at to begin with, and we'll get the cab raised up. Leave the parking brake engaged. Oh my goodness. That's pretty close. I like that. So Mike, Mike just guessed when he was, he, he manually adjusted the relief. Mike got it to 33, 25 roughly. Man, that was close. All right, let's get the cab up, make a final adjustment. So you can see right here. Here's my relief valve. You gotta tell me when. Okay, go ahead. Thirty-four. 3450. Okay, hold that. Just a little more. So yeah, 35, 3506. That's dead on right there. So we'll leave it right there. Mike was adjusting that pressure relief. He was screwing that, the one with the Allen head, he was screwing it in. So you screw it in or clockwise to increase pressure and counterclockwise or you would back it out to decrease pressure. And now he's just got to lock the jam nut and we'll be done with this one. Grab that lock real quick. I'm gonna... So hopefully that video makes sense. That that showed you know we had a hydraulic problem. It showed how we check pressures at the couplers. It showed how we did the direct pump test at the pump. It was kind of hard to kind of film Mike getting in there and, and doing the pump, but this is much easier than doing any of the M series. Uh -huh. Right, so much easier. A few hoses and lines, a couple bolts. Any tips or? Uh, we just had to use a crow's foot for those blue Loctite bolts that hold the uh, pump on. Other than that, no, it's pretty, it's way easier than an M-Series. Not bad. Topped it off, primed it, tested it, set the pressures. Any questions? Let us know. Thanks for watching.